This is magnesium. It's a lightweight metal located here on the periodic table. If I heat it up enough, it will begin to bond with the oxygen in the air to form magnesium oxide. This reaction not only generates enough heat to sustain itself, but it's also one of the brightest chemical reactions known, emitting an incredible amount of light across both the visible and ultraviolet spectra. For this reason, you can find magnesium used in sparklers, fireworks, military flares, regular flares, and explosives. But I want to take it up a notch and make this reaction even brighter. One way to do this is by turning the magnesium into a fine powder. Powdered magnesium has a much larger surface area, allowing more oxygen to come into contact with it. In theory, it should burn much brighter than magnesium ribbon does, but not because it releases more energy. It'll release the same amount of energy as magnesium ribbon, just in a much shorter duration, resulting in a higher peak brightness. The problem with magnesium powder, though, is it gets wicked away by the torch as it burns, preventing the heat from spreading throughout the rest of the powder. Plus, this isn't nearly bright enough for my liking. I'm looking to create an artificial supernova in my backyard that illuminates the dark skies. One factor limiting the brightness of this reaction is the concentration of oxygen in the air. Only around 21% of what we breathe is oxygen. The rest is mostly nitrogen. The problem with nitrogen is it acts as a heat sink and absorbs energy without participating in combustion. To address this, I filled an Erlenmeyer flask with pure oxygen gas using a water electrolysis setup, which splits water molecules into hydrogen and oxygen gas by passing an electric current through it. Alright, I've had this thing going for like three hours now, so there better be some oxygen in that flask. I guess the only way to find out is to burn some magnesium and lower it into the flask, and it should burn a lot brighter. I want to try it outside though. I was considering doing it in a fume hood, but I don't know about that. This wooden fume hood inside of my house. My fire extinguisher is non-existent at the moment, so yeah, it's gone. I wasted it on. Well, I was burning it. I was burning a. I was burning a fridge down with thermite, and <laughs> it caught on fire, so I had to use it all on the on that. Okay, so that wasn't exactly as bright as I was hoping for, probably because I failed at filling that flask with oxygen, but uh, burning magnesium in pure oxygen like that is very similar to how those old flash bulbs used in photography used to function. Unlike incandescent light bulbs, which are either vacuum sealed or filled with inert gases to prevent the uh, tungsten from oxidizing, these old flash bulbs, they were filled with pure oxygen gas and they were single use. And um, Instead of a tungsten wire, they would use a thin magnesium wire, and when you passed a current through it, it would uh, heat up and rapidly react with the oxygen in the bulb and temporarily blind anybody getting their photo taken. Anyways, I think I failed at filling this flask with pure oxygen because the reaction kind of got dimmer as I lowered it into the flask, but that's fine because if my goal is to create the absolute brightest reaction possible, I'm kind of going at it the wrong way here. The oxygen that I've been using here is in its gaseous form, which isn't exactly dense, plus gases expand a lot when they're heated, especially to the temperatures of burning magnesium. This expansion of gas decreases the concentration of oxygen around the magnesium, which prevents the reaction from reaching its full potential. The heat does create helpful convection currents which bring in more oxygen, but even with pure oxygen, it still takes a significant volume of gas to fully react with a small amount of magnesium. Fortunately though, there is a way around this. Instead of relying on oxygen gas, I could use a solid oxidizer, which contains oxygen locked within its chemical structure. One such oxidizer is ammonium perchlorate. This small scoop of ammonium perchlorate holds thousands of times more oxygen than an equivalent volume of air at atmospheric pressure. When it's heated, it decomposes, releasing that oxygen as a gas along with some water vapor, nitrogen, and hydrogen chloride gas, which is currently reacting with the moisture in my lungs to form hydrochloric acid. But magnesium can react with all of these things. However, it's primarily the oxygen here that will contribute to the reaction. When mixed together, magnesium and ammonium perchlorate react far more intensely than magnesium alone. This is because the ammonium perchlorate rapidly decomposes under extreme heat, releasing a surge of oxygen within the mixture. Even though ammonium perchlorate breaks down into a gas, which I'm trying to avoid, it still provides a much denser source of oxygen than even pure oxygen gas at atmospheric pressure. The magnesium reacts with the oxygen quicker than it has time to fully disperse and reach equilibrium with the surrounding air. But before I mix this stuff with magnesium, I have to emphasize just how dangerous this can be. Ammonium perchlorate on its own might not ignite, but when combined with a reactive metal like magnesium, the mixture becomes incredibly sensitive, far more than you might expect. 
There are real life examples of people underestimating these dangers. In one case, a hobbyist was mixing a similar flash powder in his workshop, then a small spark, likely from static electricity, ignited the mixture. The explosion destroyed the room and left the person with severe injuries. I'm joking, he died. If you make large amounts of this stuff, it could become an explosive without it even being contained. And explosives are illegal. For this to be done legally without a manufacturing license, I need to make very small amounts at a time so that it deflagrates rather than detonates. And I have to immediately ignite it on site. Transporting or storing this stuff is not an option. And just a reminder, this is magnesium powder. And here it is mixed with ammonium perchlorate. That's why they call this kind of mixture flash powder. To create a more dramatic effect, I'm going to wait until midnight, and I'll be igniting the mixture safely from a distance using my 15 watt laser. Though to be honest, adding a laser to the equation probably doesn't make this any safer, but it's a great excuse to use a tool I spent way too much money on. So let's see how bright this stuff can really get. So, can I make this reaction even brighter? No, no I cannot. This is the brightest reaction I can pull off. I can't claim it's the absolute brightest reaction possible, because honestly I have no idea. If you could think of an even brighter chemical reaction, then let me know in the comments. But when it comes to straightforward reactions, I'd say that magnesium based flash powders are definitely strong contenders. 